G'day and welcome to David Joshua Ford Live, joining you from New York with a slightly different position today. I'm going to go through all of that in a bit on today's show. I want to take a look at how we're going to put together a run of show and using some devices like the Stream Deck uh, pedal or a clicker here or a remote device on the network to build a run of show that you can automate with Companion so that you can get out from behind the desk and you can do other things because I feel like as live streamers, we're often sitting behind the desk and um, it sort of blocks us from talking. I was looking for a way to just sort of get a little more sort of like just eye contact to the camera rather than looking down at Stream Deck. And so that is what I'm gonna show you today, which is how I'm gonna run this whole show through a series of cues. And as you can see in my hand, I have a clicker and we're gonna move on to the next cue, which funnily enough is going to bring us back to the desk because even though I can get out from behind the desk, I still need to use a computer. So um, that is why I am coming back to the desk, but we will try and move around a bit, a bit on this, um, on this live stream as we go through building a run of show. So the important thing about building a run of show is that you want to give your show some structure so that you're not just rambling on. So hopefully we'll not ramble on for the time that we have here. Um, and you want to know what's next. So um, I, if I run out of um, like the end of my sentence, I don't know what to say, then I can see up in front of me that I can just click a button and we're gonna jump on to the next segment and it keeps us moving along. Um, so what we're looking at here, not here, is a cue section. So you might be familiar with um, my Stream Deck profile where I've got this sort of home switcher profile. And the idea we're here is that it's very much a sort of old school studio switcher where you as the, um, the um, operator are sitting there and you're directing a live stream for someone um, who is out there presenting. But in today's day and age, I feel like many of us are trying to do a whole lot of buttons, run the whole thing. I'm running all of this on my own in terms of audio, the lights, all the cues, the cameras, all that kind of stuff. And then somewhere in there, I have to be able to figure out a way to talk. And so this sort of layout where you're gonna be like switching different cameras means I need to look down and um, like take my attention away from you. Whereas if I have um, some other devices that aren't needing me to look and press, then I can do that more in sort of physical manner, like with a clicker in my hand or with the Stream Deck pedal. This is built around um, developing a, a run of show. So here we've got, um, we've got the menu, as you may remember, switching page is the default page on page one and then we have um, a queue page. So this is what I'm gonna lead you through today. This is my particular um, run of show. I've got 21 slots that we can fill up. You can see down the end, I'm not actually using them all. Um, and then I've also got a scene show and I've got a show page here, which you might be familiar with before, which are places that I can store um, macros or compiled actions that I can then refer back to. And particularly from the scene point of view, I can actually create buttons. So Remember on previous live streams, I've had my pre-show set up and then I've had a run, which is what I just pressed when I started the show. And then I have my end and my out buttons here when I wrap up the show. But in between there, there's a whole bunch of things that I wanna talk about. And these buttons can actually reference other buttons. So for example, um, I had my um, number one chapter, which was the queue talking about um, automations. And so when I pressed that, text came up. Um, and now you can see that we're on to Q5. So this is highlighting that the next time that I press the Q button, which is up here, and this is what the clicker and the Stream Deck pedal press, um, it's gonna activate the next action. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump on to the next segment by pressing this button here, where we're gonna jump onto the Stream Deck pedal itself, because that was a recent acquisition. Uh, went out and bought the pedal. I've got two XLs and I figure um, I have done very well with Stream Deck stuff. I quite like their quality of the build and the way in which it builds into my live streams. So um, I wanted to try it out and also I wanted to make, get a way to make this pedal work with Companion in a way that was gonna be really useful for the types of live streams that I do. So the way that I'm using the pedal is a little bit like, um, kind of like the, the clickers that you saw at the start, which is very, you uh, know, these are like 39 bucks or something, Logitech or something. So um, as we um, click the pedal down here, this is get to our 
Next cue, which was to show pedal, you'll see um, here, this was my previous cue that we just moved off. Um, and now I'm, that was showing a sort of super source scene that I had pre-built and I'd loaded into that slot so that when that gets pressed next, that brings up the next thing. Um, so how do we use this? Now I wasn't, I'm gonna keep my shoes on because I do find this is easier to operate because you're feeling for the, the foot when um, you're not wearing shoes, but I did want it to be something, I wanted to create a system whereby we could automate cues in an environment where you're gonna wear shoes. Cause I think you, you don't wanna have to take off a shoe to really run the show properly. Um, so we've got this, the center one is gonna advance the, the thing to the next, to the next cue, um, but the left and right are gonna move this cue back and forward. So you'll see, if I bring my foot in here, um, we're moving through the different cues. So this is just highlighting that if I was to then press down in the center, it's going to action that cue. Now, the advantage of the Stream Deck pedal as opposed to a clicker is that I can actually build in more buttons. So within this Stream Deck, rather than three buttons in terms of a left, center, and right, I've actually got six buttons because I've got a long press that we can activate. So with the pedal, if I long press it, it's gonna go back to the top of the show. So now if I was to press it, it would run my beginning of show setup, which would mute my microphone, it would blur out the camera, and it would get all those things into place that were ready for um, me to go on to the next one. So it would be on to run and execute that. So likewise, if I hold down the right button, that is going to jump me to the end of the show. So the idea here is if you have a, a time limit, and you're getting through your presentation and you're like, oh man, I am running out of time, then you know just by filling out the buttons, you could long press down here and then you know that the next time you press the center um, button, it's gonna execute the end of the show, which I won't do now because we are just beginning getting started. So right now I need to be able to find my next cue so I can actually use this in here. So I'm gonna jump back up. Um, I do have a copy of the emulator where are we? Uh, stream Deck pedal, show pedal, I went a bit too far. Um, and this is where I um, could jump back up. Um, I, I wouldn't do, like I wouldn't do what I'm doing there. I would probably just come up to my Stream Deck. You can also on the Stream Deck just like jump through. Um, it's on each of these pages. So you could be on your scene page or your show page where you have different buttons and you can still be accessing this queue and it'll show you what it will um, execute when you press that. So let's go back to the queue page. I need to get back to, I did my, I did my show pedal, but I might just, um, let's back up one, hey? So if I press this one, you'll see we come back to this chapter header, Stream Deck pedal, I press it again, that's where you'll see the Stream Deck pedal, and then we're gonna move on now to Network Emulator. So I'm using this as well as sort of like notes or cue cards to help me sort of lead through what I'm gonna talk about. Um, with the network emulator, you don't actually need the Stream Deck to run what I've got here in the setup. What you need is Companion, which is running this in the background um, on a computer. And um, so the way that this happens is, I think I missed the button, there we go. <laughs> um, is on Companion, which if you're familiar with my channel, you would be familiar with this. So I won't go into what Companion is, other than if you're new to it for the first time, it's an application that is running on Windows, Mac, or a Raspberry Pi. And this is what we are connected into. So you'll see here under Surfaces, I have two Stream Deck XLs, but I also have this Stream Deck pedal device. And if I click on Settings, I can direct it to which page I want it to start up at. Um, now I've got this to be um, just page one, but then I've offset it by one, um, one X and then, but it's at Y. So what that means is, if I go back to my buttons here, is um, it's offset one X. So it's gonna be this button, 1.2 is what this is, this is targeting on the Stream Deck. So I'm telling the Stream Deck, look at page one and then offset the, the layout of that by one. So the Stream Deck is gonna be looking for these three pages here. 
And um, the good thing about the Stream Deck is that it it just is always looking to that spot. So I can move my emulator around and it's not going to be clicking on different buttons, which is different to the clicker, which I will explain in a bit. But that's, um, that's how that is connected. Um, and let's just take a look at, oh man, I keep pressing the wrong button, hey? Um, let's go pull out here. So I wanted to show you what I was um, had over here, which is, so on top of my rack, I have just another computer sitting there and um, that has a screen where I can sort of monitor some comments and just sort of see if people are commenting. Um, so feel free to comment and we can, we can get to answering those questions. Um, and also on this computer, what I have is the emulator running. So um, normally under here, so when you're running your setup, it'll come up here and I go show hide window. All right, so normally I just run Companion on the local network, 127.0.0.1. Um, if I had my Wi-Fi turned on, then I would see it on the Wi-Fi network, but I'm running everything over a wired network. So this is my address here. So I've set my Companion installation to be on the wired network. And what that means is um, over on that computer, over there, that is looking up a network address, which is basically, I've got a copy of that here, um, 192.168.38. So the way you would find that is under, under your companion page, you would go to emulator up here, click on that. And now this has popped out uh, a web page. And as long as, as this web page is front and center, um, this is going to be, the clicker is going to be able to control this. You'll see down here, there is some text of how to use this. So um, you, you can actually control this with the keyboard. So for example, key number one on the, my keyboard is going to um, change the uh, layout. So it's gonna, you know, I could actually use, do it using a whole QWERTY keyboard. So the way that this works for um, the, the clicker is that it is going to, when you, when you do an advanced click, it's going to, send a com like number two to that, um, to that web browser um, is the way that companion interprets that. So that's how it's set up. That's why those clicker buttons have to be in that particular spot so that all of these devices can run at the same time. Um, but I have my um, clicker that is operating and we're gonna move on to the clicker to give you an idea of how to, if you don't wanna use the pedal um, and I do quite like these clickers, because they're, they're um, I think it's the physicality of it. This particular one sits in your palm well, um, and it just has a nice big button, which is easy to press. So the next cue here is this one. So I've got two of these ones, they're Logitech ones. Um, I've got the R400, which is officially supported by Companion. It has the advantage of these buttons being um, the back, the the uh, run the queue and then this button down here will do the like advancing on to the next queue without pressing it. If you hold these down, you can do the long press function on these, but I don't like, like it's just harder to find the, the dynamics of it. I don't like this clicker as much as this one, which is more simple, but more modern and it has Bluetooth. It has a, um, USB dongle, if you wanna just plug that into whatever computer, that makes it very easy to connect. But if you just press, I won't do it now, but if you press the top and the bottom buttons together for one or two seconds, it'll put it into pairing mode and then you can connect it to your computer. And then pretty much any computer would be um, clicking forwards and backwards. So um, let's click forward and we're gonna to go to our position, which is really just to show you that we can actually get out behind the desk and we can run the show from whatever the next uh, cue position is just by using a clicker. I have really no point to um, this other than uh, being able to you know, show you that you can, you don't have to be behind the desk, you can get out from the desk. So um, I will hopefully try and do that a little bit more. All right, so last of all, let's take a look at um, some integrations like H2R integrations coming back to the desk here because obviously I like the desk very much. Um, okay, so the way that I'm running this is like with Companion, anything can kind of 
plug into any of these buttons. So you can stack um, things very well. Um, let me go to, uh, here we go, show Mac. And under um, companion, so you've got your home page here, then I've got a queue page, um, which these are just empty buttons. So I could just make a button and be like, I could put in a, you know, whatever it is, like cut, and put in an ATEM um, cut command, and that would perform an action, but it could perform any action. Um, and as I was showing you before, like my pre-show, I have a whole bunch of commands, including like audio, and um, playing clips and all kind of stuff to get this, the start of the show set up. And then I can just do a run through and make sure everything's working properly. Um, so that is that page. And then the next page is a scene page and a show page. So what I've got on the scene page is um, cues, uh, sort of like scenes. So if you imagine like OBS where you can create a scene and you might put a camera source into that, but you might also put a graphic overlay and you might put you sort of like build out a scene so that anytime you click on that, it's going to bring back that state. That's really what I have going on here with um, these things. So for example, my super source layout showing my Mac screen, that is what is at the moment. So shift will let me test out this. Um, if I go super source with pedal, that's going to give this layout. So you can see I've also built in a command to change the PTZ position to to pull out wider because I want to get a sense of like someone sitting at a desk and then you can see sort of what's going on underneath. Um, you know, if I wanted VLC in terms of like, that's like a, not that one, sorry, Mac. Um, that was like showing my Mac desktop with me sort of smaller. So that is how that is um, laid out. And then what I can do is stack the actions. So when I have my, um, let me back up. So how I start the show when mentioning H2R is actually um, going into H2R's variables and basically typing out what I want to tell you guys, you know? So um, the chapter is like um, queue automation, stream deck pedal, then I'm gonna look at the network emulator, clicker, and then I've got two more things from the second last one here. And then I can put in a description, like create a run of show and companion, and then um, you'll see here this list 1.2. Um, these are codes that we can carry through so that it gets put onto the show and pulled into companion. So that's kind of how I build the structure of like, okay, this is what I want to talk to talk to you guys to sorry talk to you guys about today. Um, and that is just like one place where I can get my head together. So I'm not like in companion typing up different buttons and that kind of stuff. It's just a very simple thing and you can even like make this in a spreadsheet and import the CSV. So once I've got my sort of rundown of my show, in my actual rundown, um, you'll see this queue on today's show, that's where I've got a checklist. Um, and rather than typing it back in, I've put in these commands. So in the brackets, I've got list one dot row one dot cell one. So, and then that repeating that except for the row two, row three, row four, and what that is doing is pulling all of, uh, sorry, this, this data here. So it's gonna pull this data across to each of those um, headers for the On Today Show. So if I click that, remember that's what came up at the beginning of the show to give you an idea of what we are talking about. Um, and this one's on a 20 second timer, so it will go away automatically or I can get rid of it um, when I don't need it. All right, so now what I have this is just the way that I've laid it out. You could do whatever you want, like this cut button, you know, you could make that, um, let's make it something fun, like blue. You know, you could, whatever you want to call it, color it or whatever, it doesn't matter how you build your button. Um, so the way I've laid it out is I have these chapters and so I've got chapter one was Q automations and so I had that. Um, and then I have my graphics. So I'm pulling up that lower third graphic here and then I'm doing my um, row number one. And then for each chapter, I'm just updating the variable list select row action for row number two. And for the network emulator that I was talking about was row number three. So I can basically copy these buttons and paste it in and um, cut and paste and move them around to build what I want. You'll see like 
this show Mac button here was the same as this show Mac button there. I just came at a different chapter so I could go to like me on camera and then me back onto this display that you're seeing now. Um, so then once you've got these, um, you'll see in here as well, I've got a command saying button press and release. So very simply, if you just go press, you'll see button press and release. You can make a command and you'll get a page and a bank number. So 314, let's go to three and it's this one 14. Um, you might've seen on previous um, shows where I have a sort of safety button, which is basically um, turning off all the keys. So there's no like weird keys that get left on screen and um, removing all the graphics and then bringing me back to, um, back to my home position. So if I press that down here, that's, that's essentially bringing me back to my safety position where I can like track you on um, screen. Um, so that is how I am building the, the scene. And I can also jump back into anything that I just want before. So what did I have? I had a um, uh, pedestal, I had uh, this one, that's right. Yeah. So these buttons can be cut and paste, moved around in any order that you want. And then they can either run a command or they can reference other buttons. And um, this all sort of flows into this Q button so that anytime you advance it, you're getting the, let's make sure I can see this properly, um, the, the, uh, the highlighted one is moving on to the next action that will be targeted. Um, cool, speaking of, let's get the next thing in to date. Um, I'll take some questions in a bit, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but switcher update. So I am, uh, as, as you've been on this channel for a while, you know that my channel inputs, um, let's go to it here, where are we multi-view? My inputs number two and number four uh, are dead. So I've been reaching out to Blackmagic and they have kindly um, allowed me to return it. So I have to send that in, it's gonna be offline for a month. Um, it was a bit disconcerting to learn that the, the ATEM Mini Extreme, or actually I was told the whole ATEM Mini line of products is uh, non-serviceable. So once you go outside of your one year warranty, there is no servicing for it by Blackmagic. Um, and then it's really up to you to try and do it, with it what you can. But these boards are like one board and everything's soldered together. So. Um, it's just like, it was disconcerting because it's, you know, a $1,300 device. And for that to be 15 months old and uh, some of the ports breaking um, wasn't great. Um, so I did reach out to Blackmagic and they took pity on me and they are replacing it, which is um, good. But it does mean that my um, ATEM Mini Extreme is going to be out of action. Um, and in the meantime, I got a, I got a DHL package, which I, had a brief look at and then put back in the box. Um, so we've got a few things going in the works here um, that could be in a similar vein, but a little bit different. We have a Yolo Box Pro. Um, so I'm gonna be playing around with that and I'm curious to see in terms of, I think it does Instagram, I'm not sure. Um, but that is something I'm gonna be working on coming up. Although I don't think these guys support companion, but it's actually really heavy. I wasn't expecting that to be that heavy. Um, so while I am away, give me a sec. Sorry, while my extreme is away, um, that is that is something I'm gonna be exploring and looking into. So if you have any questions about Yolobox Pro, um, let me know. All right, so uh, we're just about done. Let's take a look at the comments that we had coming in. Let me just find that in my screen here. Um, where are we? Social, there we go. All right, um, back to the top of the show. There's Rob Fisher joining from um, I6 Degrees in Germany. Hope it's cool in my studio, I had 96 degrees. Um, it's, it's not too bad. I, this, once I've been in here a couple of hours, it does um, warm up a bit. Um, and my, uh, the rat can sort of, yeah, get sort of add to that, I think but not too bad. Um, I read the readout is noisy. Not sure what that's in relation to. 
G'day to Ray, good to have you here. Um, good to have Jamie from New Zealand. My wife is from New Zealand. Um, and yeah, good to see that we are pushing the capability of Companion. I was trying to also make it simple too. I, I think it's like, it's very easy to have just tons of stuff. And the challenge with Companion, as opposed to my very limited knowledge of something like Mix Effect, um, is that I think with Mix Effect, you can, is, if something changes, there's a lot more latitude to sort of update it and that kind of thing. Whereas um, when using Companion with an ATEM, all of your buttons are kind of, they're kind of there on the page. So if you want to move something and reference something else, then suddenly you've got to like reprogram all of the buttons. So that can kind of slow down the Companion um, workflow sometimes, but um, the power of it is, Amazing, there's, there's a ton of stuff in there. So um, yeah, I've really enjoyed working with it. G'day John, good to have you here. Um, and we've got Les from Hull in the UK. Great to have you guys joining on a Friday evening. Um, I usually do this on Monday, but I was this week I was working on this and just trying to get this up to a state where it could be like, look, it works. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff going on in the background. Um, Ah, uh, Rob was saying the pedal is noisy. Um, I don't know, let's give it a, a go without like activating any cues. Um, I think it's it's probably not too bad in the sense of like if you've got music and someone talking, it's, I'll just go quiet and I'll, I'll push it for a bit. Yeah, so, um, oops, hopefully I pressed the right button there. What do we got here? Yeah. Um, no, I better get on to the right. There we go. How was that? Was that noisy? <laughs> um, I think my my main concern with the pedal is what I was saying about having shoes on. It's um, it's sometimes difficult to find it. Uh, let's go back to that cam. Here we go. Oh, wrong way. Um, yeah, it's just I sort of like I'll find it with my feet, and then that's easy. But to find the center one, I'm actually usually going up and then sort of scraping my foot across until I hit that. And then I'm sort of relaxing onto that. And then I've got to hit the button, which um, let me just go beyond something that won't be action. So then I would like go like that. Oh, I'm back to my safety position. Simple position, simple push. Um, yeah, so that is, I don't know. Uh, I yeah. I think if I had like, if I wasn't in a studio production, sorry. If I wasn't, it, what I'm saying is, in a production environment, you're gonna have to have shoes on. Like you can't be running, can't be like sitting down and then like leaving your desk with with one shoe on and one shoe off. So you need to have shoes. So I kind of wanted to make something that was usable in in that environment. Um, if it was just me sitting here, yeah, I could probably, you know, take a shoe off. Although it feels a bit weird to have one shoe on, one shoe off, and then, and then I'm mean, just gonna do all my live streams with no shoes. So um, what I quite like is the, the clicker implementation of this because um, I, I don't have to, other than like picking it up, like once it's in my hand, I can sort of move around and we can click through things and um, it's not, I don't have to think about it. So that kind of makes it, Makes it easy. Um, cool, couple more people. Got a good number of people here today. Um, we've got Hans from Norway. Good to have you here. Um, also another Hans from, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that Netherlands? Um, good to have you here as well. And Tom from the Netherlands. Got the Netherlands crowd. Um, and what else? Dun -dun. Okay. Good questions from Rob. Thank you for these. Um, he says, maybe I missed it, but how many buttons are assignable and how do you assign them? So um, with the Stream Deck pedal, so I'm talking about companion software, I'm not talking about the native Elgato software. Um, with the Stream Deck pedal, that is where we're gonna go into, where did I have that? Stream Deck pedal, show pedal network. I think it was this one, here we go. There's my comments. Um, we are going to go into services and it'll pop up in here. If not, you can rescan. Um, and then you go settings and you would set a startup page and then 
there's basically one, two, three buttons, you gotta imagine, and where does that grid start? So for what I've done, I've set it to page one, I've offset it on the X value by one, and the Y is at the top row. So what that is doing in effect is it's, the stream deck is now looking at my companion installation, and it's saying on page one, let the first top of my grid be um, offset by one X, but zero Y, which is gonna be button 1.2. So this is gonna be the left button, and then it's gonna be center, and then the right button. Um, and the reason I sort of program this the way that I have is that because on with the clickers, when you bring them into play, they have a similar sort of thing, but they need the emulator, and the emulator needs to be at this point here. So in terms of, you know, clicking the Stream Deck pedal or clicking the uh, emulator and having them line up, it has to be button 1.3, and to go back it needs to be button 1.2. So that's kind of why I've done this kind of layout. Um, so hopefully that um, answers the question. Um, and then how many buttons are assignable, which is normally three, but I've been able to get six out of it because I've built in another layer of like a long press and um, so that's what we had with, what's a good view of that? Um, I think I had a view here before, if I go on my scene. Stream Deck, was it this one? Nope, not that one, that's the clicker view. <laughs> um, stream Deck, maybe it's that one. There's my face, was it cut off? Um, oh man, sorry, I'm just bouncing around once I go off script, right? Um, let's go to, is it a pedal? I can't remember what I have on these. Um, and yeah, sorry, so the long press is um, essentially going back. What was I trying to show you? I was trying to show you the, um, okay, I might just have to do this manually, which is showing you the, uh, the pedal. Is that right? Nope. Oh, that's a pedestal. Man, I gotta get my name better. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. I was hiding. Um, okay, so the, go back to the Q page. So as I was showing you before, if I can get this into the right spot, if I go long press here, it's going to reset it to the top of the show. And if I go long press on the right side, it's gonna reset it to the end of the show, which is um, a little bit off um, because I move these things around. And, and then, yeah, single press is moving that one around. So. What I've got in here is essentially, if you long press on, um, come back to this one. If you long press on this button, that's sending a command to actually press this button. Um, sorry, if you short press, sorry, let me back up. If you short press this button, it's actually sending a command to press this button, and if you, long press this button, it's actually sending command to set one of these two. Um, so for example, my end button is not actually correct, it is meant to be, because uh, I moved it, I think it was 16. So it'd be Q number 16. So if I do that, then we are on end, you'll see down here, it's showing up there. So um, that is, that's kind of how that works. Six buttons, long, long story short. Um, cool, what else we got? Um, what clicker am I using? The, the Logitech um, R400 is the one that works with, um, let me go back here. So if you go into companion, into settings, this is where you need to have, this is an important point, you have to need to have the emulator control for Logitech 400, R400 uh, enabled for that to work. Um, that's for this particular remote, the one that I don't like, if you want like the long press in it. Um, otherwise, if you just wanna use a regular clicker, it's only gonna give you two buttons, which is like the acting forward or going back. Um, but you just need to have that emulator page uh, up and active in your computer. And it'll sort of run those, those buttons. Um, the, this one I like, as I said, because of the feel and the buttons are so easy, like I never miss it. Like I, I know exactly where I'm landing. 
and it is the Logitech, um, I should look it up, what was it? A remote, um, it was like a, not that one. Um, where are we? I'll put this in the show notes. Um, yeah, I had that somewhere. It's one of these kind of ones. Um, not that one, but it's it's in the same family of those. Um, location remote. Where is it? It's out there. It'll be on Amazon. I'll put it in the in the show notes. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that question. Okay. Um, dun dun. Uh, thank you, Rob, um, for explaining. Love your effort to equip others. Yeah, hopefully you can take these ideas and build this into your own show um, and, you know, make it sort of easier to run something. I'm just sort of um, trying to, I think once I, because I do the same thing each week here where I'm chatting on the channel, now that I've got this sort of workflow down, I can make some, like, modify the particular cues, but my workflow will be the same. Um, and there's some other things I want to add to this as we go forward, which uh, I haven't quite found a way yet. One of them is automating markers like for live streams for YouTube, which is like it would calculate the actual text and number to just copy and paste that into after a live stream. That's something I think that could be done with this. Um, yeah. Okay, Rob, the secret sauce. How do you enable the highlight of the buttons is quite simply, um, where are we? Go there to um, this one. It is, oh, move around. Okay, so in the more recent versions of Companion, you can have um, variables that are custom. And so I just have a, this one, a custom, I've started a custom queue. So you come down here, I just type in Q, C-O-E, uh, go add, my startup value is gonna be one, so it's gonna be starting at the top of the show, and then the current value is whatever happens with it. Um, and then basically, each time I um, press a button, there's some stuff that happens on another page, uh, which is a little more complex, and that is, um, updating that number. So when I hit Q pre, like my pre-show, uh, when I when I run my pre-show, it runs that action and then says plus one. And so then the number, the variable number one would become two. And so now this button here would be highlighted. So if I'm coming back up here, so, um, and likewise, I'm um, when I'm advancing the highlight, um, it is just here, it's just adding one to the variable. So if I go into variables, um, where are we? See this number here, six. Um, as I am adding, can you see that? I think, yeah. Um, each number is adding on a, a digit and that gets me through to 21 cues, at which point it becomes a much bigger operation to program all of that kind of stuff because it just gets, it's very manual. And that's kind of what I was saying about mix effect. I think that's sort of the great thing about that as an application is it's sort of much more scalable. With Companion, you only have 99 pages. If you run out of buttons, then uh, you, you're, you're stuffed. So, yeah. All right. Any other questions before we wrap up here? Um, I think that should be around about it. I'm not getting any other questions here. Um, if you do have any more questions, drop them in the chat. Um, we have to get the show uh, wrapped up. Um, I'm trying to do them, well, I've been doing them every week. I just like, if it's a Friday, I'm like, <laughs> I've gotten busy. And then I'm like, it's a Friday. I've got to get this stuff done. Um, so I hope you have a, um, a great weekend and I will be back next week with something else to talk about. Um, I will be minus the ATEM Extreme. So uh, next week, no super source. Um, 
I don't know if I'll be into the Olibox Pro yet. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I will be having to run the show off the ATEM Mini Pro, uh, which is not too bad because I like the PTZ cameras give me some sort of, you know, moving around fancy type stuff, which is which is always always good. So, um, but enjoy your weekend. Uh, we're gonna take this away. As you see there, I did my click. And um, I'm gonna have info on this page. Uh, DavidJoshuaFord.com slash Q is gonna be where this side of the project is gonna live. If you go there at the moment, it is a pretty boring page. Um, but if you come back to that, by the time you watch this video after the live stream, that will have some more interesting stuff on it. Um, but until next week, have a great weekend and I'll see you then. Bye.